What are you looking at? Wipe that face off your head, bitch. <laughs> Dude, I was so excited what you were going to do for this one. You know what my first... You want to know what dawned on me first and foremost watching this movie? How not good it no, is. No, no. It, it was rhetorical. Just say, oh, sorry. what? What? Sorry. <laughs> it dawned on me really fast how Roman Bridges' director... How he's doing this all solo, so it's all him, so there's there's no one else to shoulder this blame but himself, mm-hmm. which means there's also no one to pass the blame to but himself, which means he's just, we're starting off the movie with him flirting with Cotton, telling him how yeah, sexy his voice is and how bad he wants him. I don't think that is the tactic that I would have taken to start my killing spree in this world. I don't think step one of my ghost face tenure would have been, oh, I'm going to seduce this man under false pretenses. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was weird, too. Every time you hear the voice, how does he know the inflections perfectly of everybody? That's another really thing, because it's really just a shitty opening. You know, you think about the voice thing just isn't all that cool, and it's fine with the phone, but when he's literally in a room with uh, Serena Vanderwoodson's mom... And he's <laughs> screaming at her. You don't think that somehow, like, his screaming would also maybe bypass the thing in front of his face? Yeah, only when he's on camera. It's, but it's not like he has a mask that has it where, like, he's in it. It's not like he's in an Iron Man's mask, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, he's holding a little recorder in front of his face. Dude, if I put something in front of I, I have a microphone right now, Robbie. Mm-hmm. If I start screaming into the microphone I'll try it. <laughs> and just start blasting yeah, it. Yeah, try it. See what happens. Oh, maybe it's like and a also, you think filter. you'd hear two voices? Like I said, you hear one it muffled in the background. She's like, wait, Cotton, who's with you? Did you bring a friend? He's like, no. <laughs> and she's like, why'd you guys answer in unison? We're not. You're still doing it, well, Cotton. You said where? What? You said where not. So, so, no, so I didn't. So who's your friend? Shut up. <laughs> also, it was a simple game, Cotton. You should have told me where Sydney was. Now you lose. You think so? This movie we're going to also not believe that the guy who was just lying to him, wanting to fuck him, would have actually just been like, "No, Ari, you got it right. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not going to kill you and your girlfriend." Uh, you told me. All right, thanks, man. Thanks, man. Have a good it's night. Like, that's weird. But does he also feel bad for letting Cotton go to jail for a year in his grand scheming plan? Yeah, I really don't like that at all. Thankfully, uh, it was also kind of fun too in this movie. You know, the, we found out that the exchange rate for a shitty theater storyline was the same as shitty quasi secluded house call hotline storyline. <laughs> it's just kind of a one, one, to one for one. There was no, there's just real seamless right there. Just got to put that one right in its place and felt right at home like it was the second one all over again. What's your least favorite part about this one? How uh, probably how Corny Cox looks like absolute shit, and how oh the hair God. is a goddamn abomination. The bangs are the scariest things I've ever. It's, and it's so really distracting. complete whiplash too. Is that the first time we see it, we then immediately get to see uh, Patrick Dempsey and the, the, his full head of hair and like yeah, just that yeah. great hair. It's feathered and lethal. You just don't see it. You nowadays. just don't see it nowadays. And then we have to look at again whatever the fuck went wrong. I don't know if she burnt off her bangs. I know they're not even either. No, one I don't know what the hell's going on, longer. man. All right, I thought the first one, the second one was a weird change. I'm all for Corny Cox's hair in it, but I didn't understand why she changed it. In the same city, I don't understand why these hairs are changing. Mm. But oh my well, god, can, can we go hair? back, please? <laughs> you don't change your hair every year? No, I don't actually. Not very often. No, Maybe every couple of years. That's interesting. I change mine every six I'm not months a superstar, to a year. You know, that's true too. Also, my first thought immediately was that Parker Posey is the only thing saving this fucking movie. Really? Instantaneously, I she was a little too over the top. In this. I cannot disagree with you anymore. It, it, it would it wouldn't even That's be possible. I cannot disagree with you anymore. She, af, after all, Gay Weathers is such a complex character. <laughs> That's phenomenal. We've found someone being funny again in this movie. The second one was missing that entire. The second one was all just. You know how we got to the bomb in the last. I'm sorry, I'm cutting you off for a second. I'm just. I'm sorry. I want to go good? back to the Courtney Cox thing. Uh, we got to the bomb in the last episode. The, 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 the when we reviewed the second one, how she's obviously a psycho who only wants to just be the sole. A lead of the movies, just like she finally got her wish for the sixth movie. So she made sure she looked great in the second, but then the pressure got to her. Yeah, so she and cracked. She went crazy. That's why her hair looks so shitty in the third. Honestly, one. that would have been a great deleted scene. We just saw Gail having a nervous breakdown that she's not quite Diane Sawyer yet. I mean, come on, Sid. This is this is Diane Sawyer here. Okay, this is prime time, Sid. How big was Diane Sawyer? They have to mention in every movie. Uh, I'm assuming. Uh, pretty pretty big, I'd say. Bigger than Gail Weathers. Bigger than Gail Weathers for sure. That's interesting. I didn't think was bigger than Gail Weathers. I didn't think anything. I don't think anything. No one's bigger than the Nets. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was also good to see that Dewey's uh, in his 1920s French filmmaker era for this movie, where he decided that he's going to have a creepy little Walt Disney mustache and his hair slicked back even worse than it was in the last one. I don't know what happened like to. It. Deputy Doofus from the first one where he actually was a little charming and looked like a normal person who could actually maybe get a girl to like him. Suddenly he's become very focused on his eyebrow movements and just weird 
expressions. What's interesting is you said that when we watched the first one that he had that charm. I didn't necessarily buy it. By the time the second one came around, I kind of bought it. Mm-hmm. And now the third, the third one, one he's lost with it. that creepy little mustache. Something's wrong, right? You know, who, you know who, who got back what they lost in the second one? Says mom. Says says yeah for sure. But honestly, I meant, I meant somebody else. That's mask. I didn't think. I didn't think so until she started smearing her bloody fingers across the glass with that, like, you know, haunted mansion-esque chilling voice she had going on. It was pretty hot, actually. It, honestly, <laughs> I didn't think I'd ever, I didn't think I'd say it, but if she said, Sydney, mommy comes up, if she said, mommy needs you to come over here, I think I would have walked over. I'm not sure what Sydney was doing in that one. She kept saying, mother this, mother that, though. I know. At one point, when he was over the phone, she sounded exactly like Katie Seagal in a Smart House. No, so you're begging wrong. the question: Katie Seagal, better choice or no? <laughs> I think name actress alone is probably better than whoever the hell got cast in this mi- mi- big franchise, the studio film. They could have had Susan fucking Sarandon, and they threw if they cost us one up coin, but they said, "No, nah, we don't want to spend that much scratch. We'll get this random person we found who happened to be walking by." <laughs> you know what's even stranger than that? They had that chick who looks like Carrie Fisher. I know. Movie. Why didn't they I just don't have her the point of that on? joke? <laughs> I, I have no either. idea. Was it just? Was it just? A, is George looks like a huge Scream fan, and she yes. thought I'm gonna really fuck it up when he takes his wife to see Scream three next year. <laughs> he, was that uh, the whole point of the bit? Yep, that's what it is. That's absolutely the. And reason. then what was what was the throwback line? Where, uh, the, um, she tosses it right back to her, and she's like, "You want to know? You look like Courtney Cox. You look like a bitch with bad hair who resembles Courtney Cox." That's weird because you know who that is actually. That's, Courtney that's Cox with bad hair. Such a scary thing. The Jane here. McCarthy sequence, though, was actually good for three reasons. For three reasons? <laughs> three reasons. <laughs> the Jane McCarthy was sequence was one. good for three reasons. The first two reasons are very obvious ones, and the third reason is the use of the set mm-hmm. and <clears throat> slash the use of the props from said set. It actually kind of feels almost like it's thought out again, which is a rarity in this movie. There's not many moments that come off the page where it's like, damn, it's actually feels like they were, someone planned this out a little bit. That's true. But having it with all the sets in the background, you're seeing all those ghost face, you know, costumes hanging behind her. That's just a good shot. Having her pull up the, you know, the fake knife's pretty funny. I feel like they're utilizing it a lot better than the theater of the second movie. I'm surprised she make a joke about like this is just like my boyfriend in high school. Right. Honestly, this movie <laughs> did have a couple of those in there. But I was honestly, I thought it was a little bit too much like scary movie. Yeah, for sure. But I was oh, kind of, sure. but I was also, she, yeah, she, oh, she, yeah, that one, she was, she was hurting for a squirting, <laughs> faux show. <laughs> I remember. There's <laughs> also, uh, but I thought it was pre- Jamie McCarthy scene. Your thoughts? I thought, I thought good. Like, like, I was pretty, pretty solid. It was a good kill. I liked it. I thought the. Uh, it was a lot better than whatever the hell was going on with Cotton and uh, Serena Vanderwoodson's mom. <laughs> yeah, that, actually, you know, the Jamie McCarthy scene was probably the only good death <clears throat> in the entire movie. But again, you know, all the movies, it's like. Don't really get why they have people have to die for this plan. It's like this one especially. Like, why are you killing any of these people? It's a None great of these point. Even remotely related to the, the well, they're getting because you know the first one had it where it was her friend group, mm-hmm. and the second one was like, how do we top a friend group? <laughs> Obviously, we find people who have similar names to the killers from the of first course. one. So they said, how do we top that? And then, and then, and then, you know, one of the people in the room was like, I don't know, Wes, that's going to be pretty hard to top. He's like, I know. It's been keeping me up at night. <laughs> you know, let's just not do it. I'm thinking the only thing I think that could even maybe come close to eclipsing <laughs> it would be what if in the third when they're making a movie and we have everyone getting played by someone and then we kill them off in the order of the script. Oh wow! 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 That could actually Wes. This is why you're Wes, the master. This is of why you're the master of suspense, <laughs> like the trailer says. No, honestly, because all of Wes Craven, it's not, like who, how, how does he get that title of any horror? What? Oh, did you not just watch Scream Three? I did. I also watched Scream Two and Scream One. Scream One's, I guess, suspenseful, but I don't even know if I'd ever use that. I don't know if I'd ever use that term to describe that. No one's calling Nightmare on Elm Street fucking suspenseful. That's true. It's a kind of goofy. It's a little fucking goofy. Okay, they said they said Wes Craven, the Godfather of goofy horror movies. Like that sounds about right. <laughs> From the master of goofy film. Exactly. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, Wes, yeah, Craven. Wes Craven. Sure. That sounds. I, I, I can. I can. I can endorse that product. No, I'm not gonna say. Oh yeah, the king of suspense. <laughs> Another thing, another lacking thing. I, I would never, I wouldn't go as far to say like you know, oh, it's the king of romantic horror movies because there's not even a trace amount of that heat formerly between uh, Dewey and Gale in this movie. <laughs> that lunch scene was an absolute fucking bore, and all the chemistry from Scream One and all the chemistry from Scream Two, it's all gone. Yeah, I don't know where they lost it. They're not going to find it. It seems like it's they're just and it's not even because they're not because they're at odds because almost all no all three movies have them at odds for a portion of the film. Mm-hmm. But maybe just we've seen it twice now. It's a little stale, hair. and maybe it's just, honestly, maybe it's literally <laughs> just, just the bad hair. Everything. Maybe if she was still, you know, a dream, but we'd be saying, "Gosh, this is actually the only thing holding the movie together." <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> when the pretty girl is not so pretty, mm-hmm. 
Now she's just now she's just a regular girl. Yeah, who wants to watch that? Who wants story? to watch that? Okay, which I that, 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 that's why I can see my own two eyes in front of me. I don't, I don't need, like, I'm looking at the TV screen for a reason here, guys. It's not for Courtney Cox to have shitty bangs. It's also is, you know for the first two weeks it's kind of cute where it's like oh yeah Dewey and Courtney Cox are falling Dewey love and Courtney like, Cox are doing falling in real life right. too. It's kind of weird when you watch the other ones. It's like oh they're having marital issues in real life and <laughs> so are their characters. And why are we watching their marriage fall apart as if it's at which part's real? Which part's not real? <laughs> well, again, I don't know because I think they're so married at this point in the third one. It's like, where's the chemistry? Was this when this is the star of the downfall? Where's the beef? Was this where Courtney? Why is that lady wearing a "Where's the Beef" shirt? <laughs> is that the moment where is this is this right around the time where Courtney Cox decided she was done having or any sort of resemblance of fun and hated him for wanting to enjoy his life? That's what she. This was the start of the problems. What's yeah, that's something about she's got, she's having a nervous. Like, God damn it! Stop fucking me all the time, David. God. <laughs> Stop always wanting to have amazing sex and do cool shit all the time and have fun and live our lives and spend our money and live lavishly. Fuck! <laughs> the hell's wrong with you? I don't, I don't know. You're so hedonistic. Yeah, it's disgusting. You know what's a little uh, shocking to me? How bad the production quality was? Uh, no, that, 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 I agree with you. But it wasn't it shocking like to me. It like a TV show, this one. So it doesn't even look like a movie. I think because it was so chopped together and they were constantly... I think this one was like literally being shot like a week before it got released. I think this one was filmed on the creek. <laughs> this one was filmed on... No, he's not a part of the movie. I know. They should have just done that. Instead of doing whatever the hell this was, mm -hmm. they should have been like, all right, we really do need Kevin, we think, because the second one, he kind of wasn't as hands-on with it and it really blew up in our faces. <laughs> and then they thought, you know what the problem was? It must have been that he had any involvement at all. Yeah. Because the first one, he had full involvement, and that was a hit. The second one, he only had partial involvement, and it wasn't a hit. Mm. So, obviously, the problem was that he had any involvement whatsoever. Of course. Of course. And the first one was just a fluke. So, the third one, they said, okay, what if he's not involved at all? Maybe maybe Master Suspense just didn't work without him. Maybe that was the right. problem. But I think maybe they should have just accommodated his schedule a little better, because, again, it's Dawson's fucking Creek, and this is a movie. You wouldn't last one day You wouldn't on last one day on the Creek. No, what, what I thought was a little insane was that Patrick Warburton somehow doesn't get a voice changer moment. <laughs> Oh, what? The guy with the funniest voice in the entire movie doesn't have ever. Hey, Dewdrop. Are you Italian? None of that. It's just he's gonna just walk around for five minutes and then just get just get just get killed. Say hello, Sydney, in his voice. Hi, Sydney. <laughs> What's going on? Hi, Sid. Yeah, you missed, Let's kill her. That's so fucked. They didn't do Hi. that. Sid. Also, what the fuck is that dumb shit with that machine, first of all? You can change the, everybody's voice. It, 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 That's another great point. The movie? That's another great point. You know, it's like, where is he finding these voices? Of half of these people? And again, how does he know their inflections? How, how is his AI voice so good? <laughs> you know what your mother's voice sounds like? Didn't you kill her? How much quality time did you spend recording her voice and learning it? And again, what's the AI technology you're using? Yeah. What a, what a fantastic... Where are you getting these recordings? And especially for everyone else, too. It's like the girl from the small town. You, what, she doesn't have a filmography you can go back to. You've been walking around with a fucking tape recorder in your pocket about filming. Mm. We're like, gosh, damn, I gotta, keep, I gotta get a little more footage. You know how, like, each time we've pointed out, too, how every killer, like, their motivation to doing it could just be so much simpler. They could just go to the store. Like, again, what is this guy doing? Just kill Sydney, <laughs> No, <bro>. just shoot <laughs> them. <laughs> what are you it's doing? So and again, the problem is that they have a motive in the end. That's the only That's the only thing holding back the Scream movies mm -hmm. is the amazing motive, okay? Mm -hmm. Because they don't, they, they can't commit fully like Saw where it's like, oh, John Kramer is just a goddamn lunatic <laughs> with a seriously <laughs> fucked up moral compass that's that does not know what True North is, okay? Mm -hmm. And he's doing, he does these crazy traps and they just, he mutilates them, all right? We can understand that. <laughs> You look at, like, Friday the 13th, yeah, it's just this crazy guy running around and slashing people because he's confused. Mm. When, you have a, when you have it be a complex guy trying to have a massive plan, it's like, just kill them. <laughs> it's not circumstantial like someone came into Jason's territory. It's not to torture them. It's literally just kill them. Just kill them. It was really easy tricking your boyfriend into killing your, our mother. And in the first one, it kind of makes sense what's going on. Because, yeah, you're killing them, but it's you're doing it slowly. So it's like more... Because if you killed 18 people at once, that one that's really good coordination. <laughs> and he was only two of you. But they're making it like into a big thing. People, they they, they want to get the news coverage surrounding before it's just a blip. Because if it's one night, it's a blip. If it's a, it's like, Jesus, you know, for the last eight months, we've... We've we've gone down to one one class, one grade size. <laughs> All the seniors, juniors, sophomores, freshmen. It's just one class now. now so, I don't mean just like one grade. I mean like a class of twenty eight students across four different grades. That's all we got left. Yeah, you know, second grade is easy, but <clears throat> division, social studies. This is gonna be tough. This is gonna be tough. <laughs> now this guy's killing us. But no, I also uh, didn't really like Detective Kincaid talking about the script leaking online for the fictional yeah, movie. I, know. <laughs> I didn't like how they're trying to be all like cute within Kitch and talking about like, you know, let me just let me just see how hard I can hit this fucking nail on the head. You know what I didn't like? 
I didn't like <laughs> when fucking Martha comes up. Sydney's like Who? Martha. Like that exactly. That means a fucking thing to us. Martha's Randy's sister. Oh, the character we never met before. Every time. Dude, also- how are you so far ahead of me in these in this analysis? <laughs> what are you talking about? I thought we were just listening to things we didn't like. I want to, no, well, no, because the next thing that happens is Detective Kincaid fucking says her roommate recognized your voice, Roman, and then he says, "Well, I didn't call her," and he says, "She said you did," and then he says, "She wasn't talking to me." Shut the fuck up. Okay, we get it. There's a voice changer involved in the story. You don't need to spoon feed it to us any harder. I actually like the spoon feeding. I disagree. And also, why the fuck would this random act, this random actress's roommate recognize the voice of Roman Bridges' director? Dude, he's done so many movies. <clears throat> no, he, he explicitly makes it clear that he has not. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's like, I did, they said I oh, this. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm almost 30. This is my chance. I can do the romantic comedy after this. Almost one. 30? Dude, you're pushing like what, 40. like 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 almost thirty, like six years ago when you turned thirty. <laughs> <sighs> he sucks. I really hate that guy. Every also, aspect about him sucks. He's, he's he's the solo killer. Roman Bridges director, and he the did most, kill her. One yet. He did kill her. So did he use the voice changer, or was he just talking on the phone normally? And did he actually call her roommate? Because that seems like a silly thing to do. Especially considering he is the one who killed her, mm. and it's not like he has a buddy who could do it while he's gone. So they did take him into prison. It's like suddenly the murder stopped. We released you out of prison. Suddenly the murders are happening again. That's yeah, interesting how that works. <coughs> it's very interesting. <laughs> I also think I really need to get whoever David Arquette's agent is to the point where I can be put in something scenario, scenario film more than not, where it's Parker Posey and Courtney Cox fighting over me. Forget about it. Yeah, really? What's better than that? He, yeah, but let's ask one time. What do you think of Scream 3? I think, I think it was a pretty fun fucking time. <laughs> you think it's a good movie? My favorite one of the bunch. <clears throat> Your favorite one? You like the story a lot? He's like, oh, I'm unfamiliar. Yeah, I don't remember the story. I don't remember the story whatsoever. And then, uh, <clears throat> what, was your, what was your complaint? You said about something? something? <clears throat> My complaint about, was about Martha. Yeah, what about other complaint was, well, I like the fact that Sydney goes Martha, and we're all supposed to be the audience. Like, oh, yeah, Martha. The character no one knows who the fucking idea she is. Oh, yeah, you're so far ahead of me still, right? Um, oh, I got another thing I don't like. <laughs> yeah, what else don't you like? The other thing I don't like. It, it, Eric, so the first one, we all know who Billy is. <clears throat> we all know who Stu is. When they revealed the killer, it's not, oh, crap, who the fuck are these two? You're jumping like, way oh, my, too far ahead. No, no I'm not. Dude. I went back to the first movie. But why are you talking about the end of the movie already? Bro, can I say things I don't like? <clears throat> I don't understand. There's no sort of chronological Forget order it, here. Because my first, because because my notes up to this point are No, it's a, not. Cool. Well, right, right now, where we should be at is Joe Swanson kneeling Dude, over I and just, dying. I just read fair than you, I guess. And that entire scene, too, when he killed over and died in front of everyone inside the house, it really dawned on me. I was like, you know, the entire time I kept thinking, like, this, this is a, there's, there's a ton of people here. Who's missing? Someone's just, why does this feel so empty when there's, like, a ton of people on my screen right now? And then I'm like, oh, because Sydney's not here. She's just off in the fucking yeah. woods doing some shit, dicking around. Yeah, was she busy doing Party of Five or some shit? Why is she I have she no idea why movie? she's barely in her movie. Was she also on Dawson's Creek and was too busy? And honestly, does that does check out? I do believe she's yeah. That, that 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 does make sense. And then we have Tom or Todd or whoever the guy who goes down with the ship and fucking explodes in the house. I'm not really. <laughs> I don't really understand why he didn't. Why he didn't just you know re- choose to read by moonlight and instead chose to retreat further into the darkness, which wasn't even all that dark. Where I think he needed to find a source of light. There's windows and it was it was like a, a pretty starry night outside. Mm-hmm. And so he, and he says he runs into this. Well, he's not even in his house, but he's just like, oh, I know there's a Zippo in the kitchen, <laughs> and he finds the Zippo and in lights it, <laughs> and then he dies. And just again, thank God Roman Bridges director got that off without a hitch because that seems like a serious gamble right there. They could have always left the house and like, shit, we gotta get out of here, guys. Mm. And also, the fucking <clears> back door is wide open. Would there even be enough gas in the place at that point to even light up? Would it have just aired out? I mean, I mean I don't I'm not a scientist, so I don't know, but like. I'm not one of those uh, guys who does science or anything. Neither but, am I. Uh, That's why I asked the question. Whoa. I'm not entirely sure. I'm taking a sip of water. Is that not okay with you? No, Can I not. have a water? No, no, you can't. Because <laughs> anytime I talk, it's the wrong fucking thing, apparently. Well, that's not my problem. Hey, I I, I can't I can't control my mind. And also, it's only one place. killer. Wasn't he? He literally in the previous scene, before they're in the house with the bomb and everything else, right? Mm-hmm. He's in the fucking. He got, he, he, Patrick Dempsey interrogates him. Or he suggests he's going to interrogate him and bring him in. So, like. <clears throat> is he not in jail still? Because he got questioned that afternoon. Is he already out and doing this killer thing that quickly? I think they probably just wrote in two killers and they realized what's well, making At the last minute, they're like, what let's, if it's a twist? It's one killer. Yeah, and they just both fixing the, the, the whole story rather than there being two. You know, I think my favorite part of the movie was, like specifically, is Parker Posey as a whole is my favorite part of the movie. But you know, my, 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 speci- my specific favorite Parker Posey moment might have been? What's that? When she absolutely clocks Dewey. Just, yeah, that was pretty cool. That was, I was that's interesting. I was going to say that, would you say that was kind of cool? 
That's pretty, that's pretty cool. That's pretty, I was gonna say that's, that's, that's pretty fucking hot. Actually, that's, that's what I was gonna free. go with. Yeah, and I, I really, I just, I, I immediately couldn't. I'm like, do I? So would I rather just get absolutely clobbered and just punched in the mouth by Parker Posey, <laughs> or would uh, I rather save her from a car crash from Parker Posey, or do I go with the third option, and just get you know squirted with fucking ketchup and mustard? <laughs> My favorite Parker Posey moment was when they were all in the car together. She was talking about her mom writes for the local paper of Deer Park. And she's like, her. That, that was just really cool. Yeah, that was really cool. And she was talking. Yeah, that was so cool. And then Leah Schreiber, it, she was with Cotton. Her and Cotton were yeah, in that car that talking. Was great. There was enough Cotton yeah, in this and, one. And yeah, Hope I Davis randomly disappeared from the movie, too. Yeah, and you, the way the movie started off, I thought she was going to And where that. the hell did Stanley Tucci go? <laughs> yeah, actually, kind of thing, a lot of people just disappeared from the first half of this movie. It's just, we're not in it past that, like, first 10 minutes. Yeah, that was really weird. And then we do get to see Randy. This is the part where you should mention this Heather's sister. Yeah, this before. is the part where you can chime in. What do you got from in here? Here's why your moment is, to shine. Why the fuck is Sydney like Martha? Mm. And we're also like, oh yeah, it's Martha, the character we've never heard of. What do you no, mean? Martha's what? Randy's sister. I know now. After Dude, obviously, you should be able to tell, like, oh, Princess Diaries. The, obviously, that's Randy's sister. You're right. That was stupid of me. You know what I mean? She, she, had the same. she just said, oh my God, Princess Diaries. Everybody's like, oh my God. Well, it's obviously not a Hathaway, so it's obviously Heather whatever from Prin- the, the Heather and Maza Soro. I think I know that girl's name. <laughs> Master it's Randy's Piqua? sister, Martha. <laughs> Fucking, but Randy brought his charm back. That was That's my sweet. entire thought, dude. <clears throat> Giving him my virginity to Karen Kolchak probably wasn't my best decision. Karen Kolchak. Karen Kolchek, really? Shut up. <laughs> That's so good. Randy is the best part of the fucking movie. He's on a goddamn 29-inch CRT TV. Yeah, that's crazy. The How, hell is that? But where How was is that? he the best part of the movie? But where was that in the last movie? It was, was, he was, was masked by the it leprechaun was the look. It God, was the goddamn hair. These movies are all dictated by whoever's hair they got, whether the hairstyle is. And unfortunately, they have a fucking very ambitious makeup department <laughs> that it just refuses to wear the same thing in two different seasons. Yeah, really. That was the last season. And we really suffer because of it, okay? We get Courtney Cox looking like just... I don't even... There's no, there's no words to describe it. It's fucking offensive. <laughs> and distracting. It's distracting. It takes away from the, It takes away from how good-looking Parker Posey looks. You can't pair him off like that, okay? If you want to pair off, put fucking... Put him with David Arquette more, okay? It wasn't good, <laughs> but at least I'm okay. Yeah, fuck it. I don't need to look at the man in the first place. We don't put him next to Parker Posey and have them talk so that I have to naturally look back and forth and just like, Jesus, oh my God. Jesus, oh my... Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> it's, it's not okay. Also, what I don't like about the, 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 the Randy thing, though, is for some of you, I'll see you soon. Sid, even you could die, which means he just completely lied to the audience. Mm. Our previously just omniscient Randy gets to end his tenure of giving us movie advice by being bombastically wrong. Mm-hmm. Because you know what's crazy? Sid doesn't actually die, and none of the other main characters actually die. Only the side characters die, and the third one didn't change anything, and yeah. no, nothing major <laughs> happened. And he just had all those. And then previously, in the previous two movies, he was correct in everything he said. Mm. The second one, he said, main characters can die. He died. Mm. And the first one, he was all like, there's a very simple formula. <laughs> and there was a very simple formula. That's true. It was super simple. And the third one, he just fucking lies. But, you know, thank God there's justice for it. And Princess Diaries, I, you know, she makes her grand return in number six instead of just, you know, not killing Randy off because clearly you need him in the goddamn movies. Yeah, yeah he, he turned out he was a, an important character. I also think that Parker Posey should have lived in Gale Weather, should have just died, and Parker Posey should have just been consumed by the dominant personality of Gale since they kept having that joke where she's like, she was like stop stop saying you're Gale Weathers. That's true. She was trying to become her. She That's what I'm saying. And then you could have just, you know, could have killed off Courtney Cox and just had Gale continue the series but have it be Parker Posey. And then Parker Posey could have been uh, Ghostface in one of them. Exactly. And not to mention, too, just looking you know, with my crystal ball back then as well, <laughs> first off, I would if you were telling me, if I was a betting man and you were taking bets on who will age nicer between mm. Courtney Cox and Parker Posey. Mm. I, I I put all my money on Parker Posey, okay? Mm. And the good news for me, circa back then, I would have fucking been living large right now, okay? Because Courtney Cox doesn't look like someone who should be in a movie. <laughs> <laughs> Parker that, Posey, yeah. put her on the giant screen. Especially with the, especially with the hair. Yeah. And everything that's <laughs> surround, everything that the hair is surrounding and attached to and in the general vicinity yeah. of. Poof, poof. Exactly. And she's also just smarter and better looking. And smarter and better looking. You mentioned how much smarter she is. And smarter and better looking. And not to mention, too, we get the literally side by side action on who's the better Gale here. We get Gale one 
the inferior, the, you know, the, the zero, not even, not even one. Gale 0. 0.0.1. Okay, not even the first true <laughs> release. Beta Gale. Exactly, Beta Gale. <laughs> tosses a Ulysses at the a Carrie Fisher. Now that's not going to get anything done. Uh, and yeah, then yeah. What, is, what, is, what, is, what does what Gale 1.0 do? Tosses a $2,000 ring with attitude, mind you. She that's a, that's my Gale. She gets shit done. She gets shit done. She doesn't walk around with some stupid-ass hairdo. <laughs> and fall for Mr. Fucking Dew Drop, Honey Dew Dewey. Honey Drop Dew Dewey. Speaking of Honey Drop Dew Dewey, how come there is no Dewey's theme at any point in time in this movie? Because I think they forgot. That must have been one of those things that only Kevin Williamson was smart enough to jot down in the pages. I guess, because you played it three times in the last one. You think three times a charm would have stuck? I mean, someone would have picked up on that? That's actually a very good thing. You think that would have come up in some sort of scenario? I don't know. Maybe when he and uh, Gail meet again for the first time, like in the last movie when you guys played it, or or, or any moment that really Gale. feels like it's a Dewey moment. Yeah, kind of the way it was used in the previous one. Whenever it was a Dewey moment, you play the Dewey theme. Yeah. Also, and the way Parker Posey dies, why couldn't it hold you jumping ahead yet again? Yet again? Sorry, 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 sorry, it's my thing. I do that. here. It's your thing. You do that here. I'm Stop sorry. doing it. It's no longer your thing. Get out of here. Sorry. Fuck you. I love you. Sorry. I hate <laughs> you. Thank you. Weird. 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 <laughs> Sydney walking through the set of the first movie though. That's quite literally pretty all time. That's pretty sweet. I wonder That's where the rest sweet. of those ideas went. Like, you know, that was the only idea. That was the one idea. That yeah. Yeah, they were like, okay, we're gonna cast Parker Posey. We're gonna have a really cool kill for Jane McCarthy. We're gonna have a really cool set piece, something that the second one desperately needed. Yes. And that's that's I think that's I think that's a job well done, guys. Also, I'm sorry. What's the guy, what's the director's name? Roman Reigns, as in the guy from WWE. No, Roman Bridges director. Yeah, see, that's stupid. I'm calling it Roman Reigns. No, you should say Roman Bridges director. No, Roman Bridges director. Yeah, that's way better. Roman Bridges director. Roman Bridges director. Hi, I'm, I'm a Roman Bridges. I'm actually director. a Romanoff. I'm actually, you know, I'm actually a Romanoff. Actually, I'm actually a Romanoff. Hi, Roman Bridges director from the creator of Mad Men. <clears throat> I'm actually a Romanoff. Guys, we're thirty that minutes. That didn't in. get a no second one... season. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know who else is a Romanoff. It's everybody, and they constantly keep talking about it. It's everyone that's old. They can't shut up about it. <laughs> And then also, it is pretty badass, though, how he does, when she runs back into the house in the set, he comes, Roman, I guess because Roman knew everything since he orchestrated all of it, Roman comes in from the same closet that I th- I'm assuming, it must have been Stu in the first one, when she gets stabbed at the door mm-hmm. and she runs up the stairs, mm-hmm. it was the same thing from the first movie. Now, do you think, is that you just the closet. I think you just asked this question, but maybe maybe you didn't, so I'm just going to ask a question. I didn't ask you... a question in general, okay. so I couldn't have asked any question you're thinking I may have said. <laughs> okay, I thought, okay, hold on. No okay. inquiries were made. Well, well, here's one. Right. So, since he orchestrated everything, it even got Stu and, and Billy in on or wanting to kill the mom in the first place. Correct. And, and nice got, catch. Thanks. So, do you think he knew they were going to be in that clause in the movie? Hold on, totally I'm sorry. That? Since you mentioned Billy's mom going back, you're telling me... Just let's, let me hear something for a second here, okay? Listen, okay. Sydney's mom's no Sharon Stone, okay? Let's face it. However, you're telling me she's po- she's getting caught in weary dick, and then she's also fucking Billy Loomis's ugly, stupid dad. Mm-hmm. And Sydney's father. Does this woman have no standards, types, questions, or any concerns? It's like fifteen people in Woodbury. What, Woodbury. They Woodbury. live in Woodsboro. Woodsboro. My mistake. So and there's like 17 people with right, her, right. so slightly larger, slim pickings. I guess I don't know. I think they're. I, I would have. I would have. I think I would have gone for. Would have gone for Billy or Stu at that point. She was already banging Cotton. <laughs> so you know why her have son or why, her son's friend? Oh, you're. I'm sorry, Sydney's mom. I want to, Sydney's mom. Uh, no, sorry. I lost it. I was gonna do. Uh, you know, if I come out of the shower, right, and I catch her looking <laughs> at my chest pubes down to my ball for a. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty funny. <laughs> But no, and then she actually almost walks out of her own bedroom and almost falls off the set. That's kind of cool. Yeah, that's pretty sick. That was kind of awesome. And I really like that, again, that we're back in the big house again for the third act. Mm. After all that, the next 20 minutes of the movie, I think I kind of blacked out. They were talking to the director. They are talking to that producer Sorry guy for like a little bit. This, one. this one's just so boring. This one's so easy to check in and out of. Yep. And Dude, also, it's two hours, and it's surprisingly enough an hour and 45 minutes too long. I know there were scenes I was watching. And when the scene was over, I couldn't have it. So many times, so many times you're just watching, my eyes are unfocused, and I would just drift it's, off. It's just so bad. It really is bad. But I do like that, the, again, the third act of the movie is I like that it's all in one place. I like that it's finally in a big house, and like the first one. Oh, it's not like a fucking clown house with fun mirrors and shit. That is like, weird, stupid. but it's, it's a good backdrop. It's a good backdrop. The second one had no backdrop. The second one was just like, we're in an auditorium. Yeah, here's a campus. Figure it out, guys. We're, we're in the quad. Now we're in a, a vague area of construction where this clear, invisible dummy's going to get impaled by a <clears throat> uh, rebar. Yeah. 
Wow. Where else would you see it but in Scream 2? <laughs> what would you say? I said, where else could you see something like that but in Scream 2? <laughs> Only here, folks. Honestly, the Roman Bridges director <laughs> really does need to stop pretending. That kind of pissed me off, too, when Parker Posey was saying, because with that question, she, she's correct. He, she is the best he's ever had and ever will have. Yeah. And he's like, oh, like I even remember. Yeah, as if he's thought about anything else since, okay? And it's the reason why she got to live longer than the rest of them. Because realistically, what was the point of killing the, 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 the security guard? He wasn't in the movie. Yeah, uh, what did he do? Who he wasn't was an actor. Of? That person was living living their life, putting Dewey in place. You should have loved that. That should have given you a thrill. You've been <laughs> fucking with him for the last 10 years of his life. You stabbed him in the back 15 fucking times, essentially. <laughs> it's true. Sure, you may not have been the one who pulled the trigger, but you sent the order. You've been the, you've been the grand poopon this whole time, ma- being the maestro. The most unbelievable conclusion of events anyone could ever conceive. Roman Bridges, director. I direct things, Sydney. Is that, is that his catchphrase? I'm a director, Sydney. I direct. That's what he says at the end of the movie. That's very <laughs> Devin Sawa of you. Me. You know what killers do? They kill. <laughs> Thanks, Dev. That dude sucked. That guy, Devin Sawa or Roman Bridges director? Both, actually. But I was referring to Roman Bridges director. Also, yeah. When Gail goes downstairs, I guess Roman Bridges director is dead. Gail checked his pulse, so he's clearly dead. <laughs> Obviously. When did he even do that? He went downstairs, and then he looked into. Y- y- you ever seen Pulp Fiction? Yes. Remember when they when uh Vincent Vega opens up the briefcase? No. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. Like, okay. When the light shines up. Correct. Yeah. They did the same thing. But he opens up a, a chest, an ice chest, and a green light shines up. He's like, "Oh my god, oh my god!" And the next time we cut to him, he's laying there, and again, Gail checked, so he's obviously because he doesn't have a pulse. Gail checked, there's no pulse. He's obviously dead. Roman Bridges director. Is dead. Because she checked. So obviously, <laughs> he's not the killer because he's, well, he's dead. dead. Which again really begs the question who the fuck are we, the audience, even supposed to be suspecting in this scenario? If Roman is dead, partner problem. who could it be now? We know it's not Dewey. We know it's not Gail. We know it's not Sydney. Okay. If it's not them, and I don't think it's Parker Posey. And you guys keep showing us this Angelina, so it's clearly not Angelina. And she's dead in a minute anyway. And, and what was the point who's, of that? Who are we supposed to believe the killer is? Kincaid? Yeah. Because and him and his annoying fucking partner, the two killers. Oh, oh my God. I keep, don't even, Watch I keep out for forgetting. The fucking that's, clowns. that's a person. You talk about forgetting <clears throat> scenes. How about forgetting people? I for, you, said, you said partner. I'm like, partner. Like, <laughs> I know. I, my memory has no memory. When was that guy? Was that guy Proof always how in the movie? little he was. You said partner. And I was like, police partner, police partner, police partner. I'm like, true romance. Chris Penn, Tom Sizemore? What's this, what's this guy talking about with police partners? There's no police partners in this movie. I need, I need an ambulance. I'll call you a hearse, you yeah, know? Yeah, dude, I think we just watched the extended edition song because I don't remember that guy ever being Yeah, that little before. fucking... It, it's honestly an insult to even say he's the knockoff version, but he's like the knockoff of the knock... He's, the, he's, he's multiplicity. He's like the fourth Michael Keaton in multiplicity, okay? <laughs> yeah, he's the worst. He's the copy boy. of a copy of Jason Alexander. That's what he was trying to do the whole entire movie. He was trying to be George Costanza the entire time. That's what they had here. They wanted George Costanza, and they got that little guy instead. All right? And you have you have, you have have Patrick Dempsey and Jason Alexander. You got a buddy cop move on your hands in the middle of a horror movie. All right? That's hard to pull off. That would pretty sick. Instead, they decided to double down whatever the hell this was, and those two guys became the star of certain scenes. I thought it was bad when Saw cut to random police officers for major portions of the movie. Mm-hmm. It's a lot worse when Scream does it. It's a lot worse when Scream does it. It's a lot worse when Scream does it. <laughs> it's a long pause. Nothing to say. Well, Even thing, in. Well, I have one thing I want to say, but it's, it's we're not there quite yet. So, well, okay, so I, just want so to... I don't want to jump ahead like I've well, been what, what, what do you got? What were you going to say? Well, mine involves the reveal of the killer again. And even though we've kind of said it, I don't know if we've actually said it just yet, so I don't want to spill the beans on who killed anyone. That was a longer pause. That was a longer pause. I'm sorry. No, you're right. That's fair. I wasn't. I tuned you out. A little bit. That <laughs> yeah. was like one of the scenes in Scream Three. I just couldn't hear. What, I just. I just stopped listening. That's fair. Um, you know, pissed me off the most in the movie. You asked me really well. Like, much. You know, you know what I hated the most. I said, I, no, actually, I asked you what you didn't like. What you disliked the most. Oh. You're, you're answering that question from. So here, time. well, then here you're gonna love this. Then, all right, <laughs> check this out. You know, what I absolutely hated. Wait, what? Ask me. What do you absolutely hate? I absolutely hate how Dewey's just just this otherworldly kind of doofus. Mm. How it's just. 
it, it, it nears the, the to the point of where it's like I can't even believe he could be this dumb. <laughs> what sort of brain dead fucking numb nuts zero do you have to be to first shoot the mirror furthest from the mirror you directly saw shaking? I know. Parker Posey's banging on the most right mirror and he's like, all right, I'm gonna start left to right. That's just the way I was born and raised. <laughs> It's how you read. It's and it's how I like, start. okay, she's over there, though, Dewey. How about you start in the immediate area so the absolute love of my life doesn't get stabbed in the fucking back, you piece of shit, and you're supposed to be fucking her. Can we have a little bit more pep in your step, Officer Dewey? No, he'd rather give another shot to a haircut. Do you understand for the life of me how these movies never care to bring characters to the sequel? I don't get that. Stop fucking introducing new people... Give me one good character to add to the to add to add the gang of misfits for the next one. Yeah, and that rings so true for this movie. This movie is so disconnected with this group of people. And especially, how not with her? She's literally the only, the only, the only, the only person in this entire movie who's a new addition who has that thing, um, um, uh, chemistry <laughs> with the rest <laughs> of the cast. She's also, like, the only actress there. She's the one acting. And the, the best part about Parker Posey is that Parker Posey acts the exact way Parker Posey acts. Yeah, she has that, that she Parker has that, Posey quality. She has, that, she has that thing where it's just like, well, no, I mean, yes, yeah, she's certainly saying the words I wrote, but she's just she's just saying them her way, right? I wrote them, but she makes she makes it something. She special. makes them her, she makes them very Parker Poseyfied. Yeah, very. She gives it that it's that, pockets that. full of Parker Posey in all of her words. <laughs> yep, it's a good play on words right there. That's pretty. Funny. A lot of people, a lot of people can eat. Not even, that's 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 like she's never heard that one before. Probably not. She probably has. Probably not. It's not that original. Actually. At, at least at least now. <laughs> Yeah, she she heard it now. At nice least point. for sure. So at least twice. Yeah, at least twice. No, my point though is that she's the only person who has again that, that thing, that fangled thing, chemistry, mm. the thing you uh, strive for in any real sort of interaction on or off screen. Actually, I was thinking about that chemistry thing you keep mentioning. It's like it's really easy to spot when it's there. Because when, when it's there, it's there. When it's not, you know, it's not. It's, it's not. super obvious. That's it's not super there. obvious. Yeah, it's just not there. But apparently, only we see it. Somehow. Apparently, only we see. It. Apparently, every, it's just crazy. It's everything we think is so right. And everything everyone else thinks is just so wildly and confusingly completely and just utterly wrong. That's the crust we got to bear, man. And honestly, it, it's, it ain't easy. It's not easy being cheesy. Right. It ain't, uh, that's funny. I was thinking about saying it. And uh. then I, at the last second, I bit my tongue because I thought how stupid I would sound saying it. Well, thank God, God I'm here to take Because it, now, yeah. you know, that, now you do know that, that we are cut from the same cloth in some regard. The mm-hmm. only difference is that I know when to not say stupid shit. Can you work a little bit on that? How about I don't, but we I pretend I do. I play like game of what if. Mm. You know it'd been really cool too after seeing Dewey just literally again let Parker fucking Posey die. Okay. So we're like I've he, seen this movie before. He does it with ease too. He's just like ah, oh, it's whatever. I saw this movie. I've seen this movie numerous times. Okay. Mm. And I was still I I must have just completely bl- I don't remember that whatsoever. Yeah, did I? I okay? was surprised when she. And got I was killed. like, I guess she lives in this one. and She's just not in the sequel because like I know Dempsey lives in it. He's just not in the sequel. Mm. I guess he just never. I guess that fucking uh, that cast really developed into something a lot serious. He had a hair appointment; he couldn't make it. <laughs> yeah, he's that's honest. That that's, that's the equivalent of the fucking uh, dude. I missed your wedding. I'm not gonna miss our American reunion. For the third the name of the reunion. movie, Oz. <laughs> Shit! I did it again. Fuck! Every movie we filmed, you're always saying the title. <laughs> it's not even written. Like, what are you doing? This guy was. I did a movie with Brandon. He told me it's the best way to make sure you're, you're in the trailer. You're one of the main characters, dude. You're gonna be in the trailer, <laughs> <laughs> but no. Uh, after he let my um, my sweet Parker Posey die, I, I I I really really was hoping that this was some, you know, not not some old school fucking scream three, but some new school scream three. Mm-hmm. That would've been cooler. Kind of like the whole when George Lucas went back after getting, you know, when they dragged his name through the mud in this movie, but that's besides the point. Uh, <laughs> what I thought would have been cool is if it was like the whole, you know, who shot first between Greedo and Han, uh-huh. and instead of something no one gives a shit about like that. I think they should have had support for it where it was the version in which the knife that gets thrown at Dewey's fucking head, Mm -hmm. instead of hitting him with the handle of the knife, which I feel like is honestly less likely based on the way you throw knives. That's kind of the the fun thing about throwing knives is a lot of the time you don't hit the thing with it. Especially when you throw with such confidence and accuracy and pinpoint precision, you'd think it's not going to, he's not going to throw it in a way where it has an extra spin on it to save Dewey. It's undeserving sack of shit, loser life. Especially when you're Roman Bridges director, you make your, you make Roman your Bridges director. You think we hit the shots. 100%. Why? Cause he's a director. What do directors do? Make Get their shots. shots. Also, he literally killed Parker Posey. Is there no, is there no God in this universe? <laughs> also, Parker Posey we- died on his watch. Okay. And you can be, you can be mad at Roman Bridges for killing her. Fine. Uh-huh. Whoa. 
Or you can be mad at Roman Bridges' director for killing yeah, her. Yeah, have some respect. Yeah, have some respect for the guy, all right? He's been, he's, been, he's been leading this entire charge for the last three movies. Yeah, without him, there'd be no Scream 1, Scream 2. Mm -mm, exactly. When they sat down, when Kevin Williams... <laughs> When Kevin Williamson sat down in 1995 to write fucking Scream and uh, I Know What You Did Last Summer. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that very day, on that very day, Aaron Kruger knew that he would come <laughs> yeah. on for the third movie and reveal Roman Bridges' director as the villain. It's honestly, if you watch the movie now, you can kind of see how some of the signs You can see how it goes it. back to you. You can tell how it was always, it was clearly always orchestrated by Roman Bridges' director. I mean, how does the movie open up? We see that scene of Cotton. He's on the small... It's like... It's like it's he's walking around, and Roman Bridges' director is flirting up a storm, a storm with him. He's talking the talk. He's giving him, he's giving him the goods. He's saying, oh, my God. Leah Schreiber, you sound fucking sexy. And he's like, well, thank you. I, uh... <laughs> you like how I sound, huh? Uh, you should watch 100% uh, Cotton. And honestly, <laughs> I'll give credit where credit's due again. Maybe the same guy who came up with the whole entire... Let's do the set from the first movie. Let's have it, uh, a piece for the final film and everything. Mm -hmm. And let's cast fucking Parker fucking Posey in this movie. Mm -hmm. I think it was the same guy. So it must have not been Erwin Kruger. Those were the leftovers. It must have been the other guys. One, some, someone who was doing their job. <laughs> One of them definitely came up with the name 100% Cotton. That's awesome. You know, I think I, I think it was Leo Schreiber. Leo Schreiber. I fucking agree 100%, okay? He's the guy. He, he, he's, he falls into that category of Ethan Hawke and Richard Linklater mm -hmm. of being incredibly douchebag, pretentious douchebag, but also have a beer with you know, plumber with a heart of gold guy. <laughs> yeah. It's a fine line to walk with Richard Linklater, Dick Linklater, Ethan Hawke, and Liam Schreiber do it fucking well. Yeah. So you're right, he probably, he's like, guys, this one's on, I'm going to save this studio $200,000. This one's on the arm. Call it 100% cotton. And then I'll wear 100% cotton when I get killed. That's pretty like, God damn it, Liam. This is why this put you in the movie. This is, why, this is why you're the actor making the big bucks. This guy's elevating us to such a new height. I agree with that. Maybe they shouldn't have killed him. Maybe he could have been the person who got brought in the movie finally instead of being the opening death scene. Why don't even he and Parker Posey have to share the movie together? I'm, true. Why can't they have a full movie? They're not even in a scene together. together. God damn it. <sighs> that, well, that really is a piece of shit move on his part. I'm pretty positive in his GQ or Vanity Fair or whichever one it might have been. I think he goes on things saying, like, hey, he's like, you know, I didn't really want to come back for a third time. And I, uh, I thought, what if they kill me? Mm. I think it might have been his idea. And I'm not sure why he brought in fucking, you know, excited Serena Vanderwood's mom was to be in Scream and Sunny's like, why, well, Christine, you're going to die as well. <laughs> hey, Christine. Didn't her roommate survive in the last movie? Who? I don't fucking know. Man. I, can, I, I, don't, I can't tell you. There's There's this movie does a good thing of just making me confused on major plot points. Because, like, she should have carried over and been a character. Like, she's an intern on the set or some shit. Just there's some kind of continuity so we care about these characters. You think, but, but no, they, they chose not to do that. these characters 30 minutes in the movie, then they all die. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a very Walking Dead approach of doing it. I had to say goodbye to Pops real quick, but we're back. Where where are we? Right fucking here, I said, I said. <laughs> um, it's your turn to scream, asshole. Why isn't Sydney shooting to kill? Yeah, I don't know. I, I just I don't think she understands how the game works yet. And also, we're just risking bold. We're risking bold professes, especially considering the fact that we find out when he shoots her, what does she have on? Bold profess. Bold profess. You know what I think would remind me to shoot someone in the head to kill? Bulletproof vest. Bulletproof vest. You know why? I think, holy shit, I want a bulletproof vest. I'm a really in a horror movie where the person always comes back for another one last scare. Mm. Maybe I shouldn't shoot them. Maybe I shouldn't aim for the bulletproof vest that he could possibly be wearing. But like she says later on, being all kit, she's like, I guess we are related. I guess we think alike. I, my favorite part was how she's not smart enough to shoot him in the head, even though she's wearing a bulletproof vest herself. Mm -hmm. And then Dewey, the Police jumping officer. Ahead. We'll get to it. You're jumping ahead. How am I jumping ahead? I'm talking about... Scene. It's not, I'm talking, you know, you're jumping ahead. Because the next thing you should no, be talking not. about is how this is the moment where they try to have fucking Kincaid run in here. It's when she's untying Dewey and Gale. We're not at the final part with the big reveal look, yet. Okay, this is before much you know, my butt, dude. I'm just saying it, man. I'm just calling it like I see it. Yeah, well, you see it incorrect. I am whatever I say I am. If it wasn't, then why would I say I am, you know? Can't argue with that. Can't argue with that. No, in no in no way, shape, or form in no way, shape, or form do I ever actually suspect that Detective Kincaid is a suspect. Nothing. Not Everybody's a, thing. a suspect. No, 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 nothing. Not a thing. Not a thing about Dems makes me think that he's got anything going on underneath the surface. Okay? He doesn't walk in there. I don't care if he gives a little gives a little eh, look at me, smile. No, he's I don't buy, I'm not I don't who wants to think the killer is? <laughs> I don't think it's him. You don't think Patrick Dempsey could have been the killer? 
No, I mean, I guess maybe I for first a second. Story, I definitely thought it was him. For a second, I thought he was a killer when he fucking shoves Sydney's head into that armchair. <laughs> yep. He literally takes the he takes the knife to the chest to save her, but he goes from just geek to chic in her eyes so quickly, you know, taking that knife for her instead of her. Nice. And instead, he falls up and says, like, yeah, baby, don't worry. I did it for you, sweetheart, right? Or taking her around in his tractor. What does he do? <laughs> he immediately shoves her, and she goes headfirst into a... Thick armrest. Uh, it's, 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 is that a hero? Is that the hero of the movie? You know, like when you're younger and you want to flirt with the girl, you're a little right. A second little grade, mean. pull the hair, kick rocks at them, right? That's, that's all he's doing. Yeah. Just second grade, smash fun. a lunch tray over their heads. Yeah, beat yeah. the shit. Exactly. <laughs> it's just second grade antics. That's yeah. It's the third movie. I'm also confused how afterwards when Sydney then runs after him because he just scurried off like a little scary little guy. Mm. A good little ghost face. <laughs> How did Sydney even come to know that there's, or that she should be looking for hidden passageways in this house that she's I never know. been in before? She just got there. She wasn't there when Angelina and Roman and Jennifer were talking about it. She just went into a random room, locked herself inside of it, was in a dead end, and blindly decided to look for a secret bookshelf. Like, what the fuck is that? She saw all the movies. And how the sets. hell did it work out for her? <clears throat> Was that what it was called? The, called the God, called, called the Christ moments where she was like, God, just let there be, be a bookshelf. I'll, I'll go to church scene. again. She says a prayer. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, this is a. This just doesn't really fit the tone of the movie. It's not. It's not suspenseful enough for the King of Suspense, Wes Craven. So we're just gonna have it where she instead arbitrarily stumbles upon this perfectly placed hidden way bookshelf. More suspenseful. It's way more suspenseful that way. What if instead they don't have that happen and like they could have not killed Parker Posey and instead. Uh, dude shoots the right piece of glass and she gets out of there and then they kind of chase Ghostface and she goes upstairs and she just naturally stumbles upon the hidden spot by seeing a broken glass window instead of just you know, like going to a bookshelf and yanking off books in a state of hysterics and then just happening to pull the right one to open a trap door to spin around the other side. I don't think she had to pull around. I think she knew which one she was pulling. I'm not sure what part of the script led her to believe that she knew what was going on there. I don't know, but we saw it happen. Unless it was one of those uh, moments in like... Um, Fear the Walking Dead, where uh, Ophelia's laying in the sand, and Daniel's just, like, or, like, in The Walking Dead, because that had more people with the one with Merle when he's talking mm -hmm. to Daryl, which is, like, in their head, like, you gotta do it, and they're like, Sydney, you gotta, you gotta go in, the, you gotta pull that bookshelf, and she's like, oh, my God, thanks, Mom, for helping me. <laughs> you were scaring me before, You were scaring me before with your you. sexy ha Haunted Mansion voice. And those bloody fingers. Uh, tell me it's not the bride in Haunted Mansion who chops off the guy's head. In the no, other eye. Yeah. It's that it voice. <laughs> no, it's not at all. It's the exact same thing. I don't think we've been on the same rod. You're thinking of a different rod. You're getting confused. You always get things confused. That might be it. You're the guy who gets confused all the time. And then we get terrible stuff like, you were the only child she claimed. Left me out in the cold. She shut me out forever. Roman Bridges, director, brother. How come Miss Theatrics? I didn't know you could write something, act something, shoot something, and edit something to be so fucking stupid. I had no idea. Now you do. Now I do. Now I know you can have a character say their entire motivation and then say, Roman Bridges, director, brother? <laughs> well, now I'm all caught up. Thanks. I guess I fell at this one just like I fell at the last one. The first one, it was like, ah, oh, shit, I really didn't think it was Billy, but the, the clues all there the whole time. It was Steve from the beginning of the story, the pizza guy, right? <laughs> yeah. But unfortunately... In the second one, there's this thing where it's like, no, you didn't think it was Aunt Jackie? <laughs> Idiot. Yeah, I, did, I did not know that. Was she and in the, last the third movie? one's like, oh, you moron. You didn't think it was the guy who we just established was dead with no pulse? <laughs> you stupid fucking God, moron. God, you even watch, did you even watch the movie? <laughs> and you couldn't tell it was her brother? Weren't you always curious why she didn't have a brother? Tatum had a brother. Why didn't Sydney? Oh, you said you're the only child? That doesn't yeah, make right. sense. You were the only child she claimed. She left me out in the cold. She shut me out forever. Roman Bridges' director. Brother? <laughs> hey, brother. You fucking, she's missed the asterisk with the art Buster, major. can you not play that on the balcony, buddy? In the last one. and in the first, it's too cold out. And then the first one, she <laughs> puts the Scream costume on. Why didn't she do it this time with her brother, who's her perfect opposite? He's a director. She's an actress. Who? It makes complete sense. Who? Sydney. 
We think she's of not an actress. Oh, the second one you mean? The second one. No, she, she, she works at a call line in this movie. She's not no, an actress. No, but hold on. The first one, she's so theatrical. She puts the she puts the ghost face mask on to fuck with Stewie. And, yeah, and that pisses me off to this day. And then and the they, sec- and that drives me up a fucking wall. Yeah, actually, it's dumb as shit. But that inspired her to go into this acting career in the in the theater. Yeah, in, in the, the second theater. one. But so in the third one, why doesn't she put the costume on now when she meets her director? Four hundred dollars for a tub full of diamonds. That's like. <laughs> a million diamonds. A million fucking diamonds. That's good stuff. That's good. That's that's good stuff. That's good stuff. You know what this one should have been? Because they since Parker they, Posey. No, since they didn't follow our idea, which they should have known in the first place. Right. Having Tatum, Billy, and Stu survive. Right. And it just becomes the the curve. No, I think I said in the first movie, it should have been where. Uh, Billy and Stu's plan succeeds, mm-hmm. and then they go off to college the next year, and then it becomes, I don't know what you did last summer. Yes, but Tatum's in that yeah, one. Yeah, but Tatum's in it. He she doesn't get killed, no, and neither does Randy. Dumb. Yes. Yeah, exactly. That should be the second And one. Randy doesn't have weird, creepy troll hair in this movie. No. Never. And the third one still is about Parker Posey, and yes. it's still the same thing where Gail gets killed off, and Parker Posey assumes the character. Yes, absolutely. All that stays the same. Yeah. But since they didn't fall out for the second one, and since Sydney does survive the first one, she's in the second one, and the third one... The third one, she should have been the killer right. because she's just going fucking crazy because everyone is trying to fucking kill her. Mm. Instead of having this, and that way, you can forget all the rules because then it's like the main character is actually, the, the, the protagonist is actually the antagonist. You want to know another part of the movie where I would have gone left and they went right? Where? When that guy said, you don't have to do this, Roman. Just tell me what you want. I can make it happen. <laughs> Any picture, name your budget, script approval, final cut. Right? Yeah. Final cut, Jerry! Okay. <laughs> and then he's like, yeah, yeah. I got, I got that. In this moment, they wanted their writer to be quick-witted as ever and thought of. He, on the spot, he's like, hmm, I've already got it. Slit, slit. He cuts his throat, right? Uh-huh. Final cut. Ha, 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 ha. Mm, that's right? clever. Ha, ha. That's pretty punny. Ha, 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 ha. It's a good one, right? Yeah, it's a really good It's one. really funny. But did you hear the deal he just, he just gave you? You've been introducing yourself this entire... Every time we've seen this entire movie, all you've said is... Roman Bridges, director. <laughs> Every time you've graced the screen, it's been with the introduction of Roman Bridges, director. You think you're a doctor, buddy? Stop doing that. Every, you think you think that someone would have snapped where he's when the guy says what your entire fucking identity is in this movie. Take the fucking deal. He just will give you final cut, whatever budget you want approved. Write whatever script it is. Make your passion. Make your fucking magnolia. That'd be awesome. Stop killing these people. Take his offer. And you know what? I think you could you could argue you could be one of the scenarios like in Dirty Work where uh, he's like, ah, that kind of never hold in a court of law. You idiot, right? <laughs> yeah. One of those deals. I'm pretty positive when you've slaughtered everyone he knows, uh-huh. he may take it. But you know what? I'm not going to call his bluff here. <laughs> Roman Bridges is an Academy Award winning director in by next Oscar season. And instead he chooses to slit his throat. And then get shot. He offered you Final Cut, bro. You never say no to Final Cut on any movie. I don't care. It's like it's like one of those scenarios where you hear a director being like, oh, "I just took on such a responsibility at such a young age. I just wasn't ready to handle that kind of a movie. I really just you know str- strung out." Uh-huh. It's like, don't care. They give you final cut. You say, "I don't care what the movie is at all." Because if you get final cut, change the movie, mm-hmm. make it whatever you want. And this idiot, this knucklehead, decides to kill the man instead. You you know what gets you power? The guy who's powerful owing you a favor, not not killing him for the sake of a punchline <laughs> to say, huh, "I've got final cut." Bitch. And if you movie next movie tanks, you scared him so fucking bad. Usually the next one, final cut again, doesn't fucking matter. You have your entire. You, you have your entire. You're gonna be in the you're gonna be in one of those. You know the very few that the Clint Eastwood just like here's approval. Yeah. I want to do a movie. Here, t- whatever much money you want, take it all. That could be his career. Instead, what is he? He's the guy who gets shot, and a couple seconds later, his star shines very dimly for a very little amount of time. And how gross is it when fucking Sydney holds his hand for that split second? How gross is it where he's just whining to her about his fucking mommy issues? I know. The whole how pathetic is gross. it and how it's just not cool at all and how the first two movies are all his motive? And I don't understand how this shit makes it to my... I don't understand how this was written and makes it onto my goddamn television screen. I don't either. What did I do to get this to be my fate for the third... You know, if I was watch the first movie, when I first off the first time, I'm like, oh my, this is amazing. Second mm-hmm. movie, pretty... It's, it, 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 it's a follow-up. <laughs> Third movie, I get that piece of shit, and that just retroactively makes everything everything it makes because the they first had connected so dumb because they arbitrarily decided to connect, and now we're stuck in the sensation where it's like, okay, so Billy and Loomis, I'm sorry, Billy and Stu were actually just henchmen for Roman Bridges, director. <laughs> All right, any sense? Yeah, I didn't like him one about his pathetic mommy issues. That was rather annoying. It's also really it just is a, a massive letdown when it's just one killer because it makes everything feel so much less practical and just simplified to the point where it's stupid because it's like, wait, how the hell did he just do that? Wait, when did he <laughs> – wasn't he – How they were just over – if he was in the basement, who did the – what? 
doesn't make any sense, does it? Who was talking to Sydney when she... So he was faking his death in that ice chest, talking to Sydney on the phone when she was in the police station? Yeah, I guess. Well, hell of a multitasker. He's good. He's good at his job. He, 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 he directs things. He's a director. And also, it's the third movie. Just make it three fucking killers. Just make yeah, it three really? killers. Exactly. Why are you going backwards? Why are you going Go backwards? Don't make it one killer. killer. And don't make it one killer. Don't tie it into the previous ones. Make it three killers. Okay, you know what the three killers are? You got it in the script. Angelina's a killer. Patrick Warburton's a killer. And Parker Posey's a killer. Sorry, not Parker Posey. Randy's sister is a killer. Parker Posey is the new hero of the story in this universe. <laughs> okay, here's the killer. Randy's sister, okay? Mm -hmm. She's from a small... You know they keep saying Angelina, the Emily Mortimer from the newsroom? You know they keep saying she's a small-town girl who won the part? Mm -hmm. Hey, happy because she's a small-town girl who won the part who's actually from Woodsboro. Okay, Ooh. she's Randy's sister's friend, right? Mm -hmm. And they're all, you know, bummed out that they're not the ones who got famous, that they were just the class behind the fame. Mm -hmm. And they're a little pissed off, right? Sure. And have where they then they recruit Patrick Warburton because he just he's just tired of working for the Parker Posey. He's just tired of her, her antics, right? Mm -hmm. And he's kind of like their inside where he's kind of always around. Instead of killing him off in the middle of it, have where he's part of the killers in the entire movie because he's like one of the only famous people you have in this movie. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure who the hell Todd is supposed to be, but I'm not I'm not, never, not familiar with his work. <laughs> Mr. Zippo Lighter. My point is. He's around in the entire movie. Now we have an inside man who's always around Parker Posey, and Parker Posey's always in the group, and she's going to be shocked. Oh, my God, my bodyguard's trying to kill me? Mm -hmm. That's crazy, right? Instead of just being Roman Bridges' director <laughs> and brother. Patrick Wardenberg, bodyguard. <laughs> Patrick Wardenberg, Warburden, bodyguard. That sounds better, right? So it's Angelina, Patrick Warburden, and Randy's bodyguard. sister. What'd you say? Bodyguard. Right. Address him appropriately. Patrick Warburden. Bodyguard. I'm sorry. But then you also have it where to make Roman Bridges uh, suffer more, to suffer director. more than he'll die to. Roman right? Bridges, director. Roman Bridges, director. <laughs> Roman Bridges, director. To make him suffer more, what you do is you have it where Angelina, I know in the first draft of the script, I think I think even in some scenes that don't make sense, but I think he's supposed to be, she's supposed to be dating Roman Bridges, director. So, too. so what they should have done is have it where she's the killer mm. and she's actually just seducing him to get into the movie. And she yeah. actually doesn't love him at all. So when he does die, he also has a broken heart as well. Yeah, that's cool. And then that would make Roman Bridges' director a lot more tolerable if he died with a broken heart. Mm -hmm. After complaining about his mommy. Actually, that doesn't happen. He's no longer the killer. He's just some asshole who's fucking annoying to look at. <laughs> that's is... his role in my version of the movie. He's just a complete cannon fodder. You know, that I can I can stomach that version. I can handle that. Not where everything hinges on his uh, Angelina, a small town line. girl. She's from Woodsboro. She's Rainy's sister's friend. They want attention and fame that the class above them got. Mm hmm they get the bodyguard to help them. Mm. Story writes itself. Where's a cotton fit back into the story, though? He can be part of the whole thing. He doesn't get killed in the beginning. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. Where's he coming in? And also, and if we do want to kill cotton in the same way, let's say, that's a, let's say, let's say that the over at uh, Dimension or Miramax, they're like, no, no, no. You're killing him. We're tired of him. You're killing him, right? <laughs> yeah. At the very least, now since we have three killers and it's not just one guy, mm. we can have it be where either um, Newsroom or fucking Princess Diaries can call Joe Swanson up, call Putty, and be like, I'm not Patty, Liam Schreiber, he's not helping them. I'm sorry. Now instead of having the man call him, you can have the two girls call the guy and floor them and not have it where it's just some guy who's like, just like, hey, sexy. <laughs> Gosh, you sound so that? strong. You sound just like that cotton guy. Oh my god! I'm talking you know I actually am. Yeah, guy. I am. I actually. Uh, you listen. You like you, you, you're a cotton head, huh? Oh, that's so fucking hot. <laughs> <laughs> you just say, like, "Yeah, you want to fucking make me come?" <laughs> and, like, and, then, and then Roman Bridges is like, "Yo, what the fuck?" He's like, "Yo, who's this?" <laughs> Yo, I, whoa, uh, I, I, ew, I dropped gross. The voice Sorry, hold on a sec. Right? Ew, what the hell? Ew, what is wrong with you, dude? Don't do. Oh, ew. And they're like, yeah, I think we're going to cut the whole cotton <laughs> scene. It doesn't really, it kind of fucks up the whole master of suspense, Wes Craven. <laughs> what if we just cut back some of the, ooh, ah, oohs? What if we keep the scene just oh, short? Oh, ew, part? gross. What if we just short that, we keep the scene? Oh, <laughs> ew. ew. Oh, gross. Ew. Ew. <laughs> At least Roman Bridges, director. <laughs> Did take the kill shot on, on? He at least attempted to take the kill shot. He shot her in the shoulder, not the head. But he did, in fact, try. He because he did say, "How the fuck are you alive?" Yeah. Like five minutes later, he was completely. You're fucking alive, Sydney. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> and then he's like, "How?" And then again, you think he would say, "Oh shit, I'm wearing a bulletproof vest. Maybe she is." But again, he can't make the connection either. They really are two pieces of the pod. <laughs> like brother, like sister. Brother, like brother, like sister. Apple doesn't <laughs> fall too much from the Horus Maureen tree. The Horace Marine tree. Uh, I think that blooms in spring. 
No, it never blooms. It's oh. always just dried just... up and disgusting and used. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 um, also, Sydney holding his hand is fucking goofy. It's so dumb. It's unearned. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't make me think Roman Bridges, director, is any better of a character or explain his stupid motives or make him seem like a little whiny baby bitch boy. Yeah, really? That's all he is. He's a little whiny baby bitch boy. Why is that our killer? Why we'll isn't it have a tiny Patrick baby Warburton? Bitch, said, yeah, no, I'm a... Uh, Sorry. Didn't want to kill you, Sid, but uh, Buck Pose is real doing. So, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Why isn't that? You Italian? Huh? None of that. No, it's, instead it's Roman Bridges, director, <laughs> brother, <laughs> fashion brother. icon. Fashion icon. Poet. Slam Amateur poet. chef. <laughs> Amateur chef. Likes to restore bikes. <laughs> Bird enthusiast. What is going on? <laughs> Can you stop telling me about yourself, dude? This isn't speed dating. <laughs> and he's like, shut the fuck up! <laughs> Don't ruin my moment! I had this all planned out! You would have I thought you were gonna respond like, wow. I had no idea someone so so many hobbies could do something so vicious. And he'd be like, Yeah, I'm a lot more complicated than you people think. <laughs> <laughs> Can you want to like? I remember like, that was days. your final line. <laughs> it was like, gonna all be wrapped around in a little bow of you're more complicated. He's like, shut the fuck up, <laughs> shut up. It's and all- then it's ridiculous. This is what you wanted to mention: the fact that Sydney has to tell Officer Doofus twice to take the headshot, and how the first Aren't time you a cop? when she says it's the first time, he can't even wrap his head around the concept. <laughs> He empties the fucking magazine into the guy's chest with a look of genuine curiosity. He's perplexed. He's like, this entire situation is so, it's just, he's like, I can't wrap my head around this. <laughs> I keep shooting him and he's just eating these shots. This is some paranormal shit. It's a little ridiculous. And then, and then, and then, the and then Nev Campbell's like, hey, moron. <laughs> Officer head. Doofy. And he's like, what? <laughs> shoot him in the what? <laughs> you want me to shoot him in the dick oh so then you have to uh escort him back to the back what to blow him no <laughs> to bring him to the girl oh okay, that's fine ew <laughs> gross oh yuck oh, <coughs> fucking officer doofy finally shoots him in the fucking head and he goes at the end he goes hey thanks and she's like no problem You're welcome he, he's like what I guess they didn't teach deputy dipshit that at a cop school. He was like, oh. And, okay. Headshots. I never even thought of that. Yeah, well, actually, if Walking Dead taught us anything, headshots only kill zombies, not that's people. That's true. Not people. It's, it's exclusively like a shooting a zombie mm-hmm. thing. So that's probably why Dewey didn't know. He, only plays, he plays video games. He Dewey does play video games. Thing. Dewey plays video games and has a chronic masturbation problem. Okay, that's what Dewey's. <laughs> that's David Arquette's. That's where the limp uh, came behind, from. That's where the limp came from. Yes. It's like, <laughs> sir, you're, you're masturbating far too much. You're losing mobility in your left leg. <laughs> We're not even sure the correlation, but we're certain after your 48-hour stint with a record 56 climaxes, we're more than positive. We are more than positive. It's something to do with the amount of incessant (laughs) whacking off we're witnessing here before our eyes. All right. At first, we were going to call, you know, the news over here, but we think we should should just go. We're bringing in a priest. We think you need to sit down and talk to him. No one should be this horny. And he's like, oh, my God, corny cocks won't fuck me. And then again, though, with that hair, that might be a blessing in disguise. What? I said, with that hair at that time, that might be a blessing in disguise. True. I can't imagine working all day with Parker Posey pretending to fawn over me and then going home and seeing Courtney Cox lay in bed with that haircut. Yeah, what is that? I'm sitting in the guest room. I've heard of the couch, okay? (laughs) Our marriage is hanging on by a thread with that haircut. Until those fucking bangs grow in, our marriage is dangling. (laughs) Those are bad bangs. Those are bad fucking bangs. Also, it's again, it's just absolutely goofy as fuck that Roman, Roman Bridges, director, <laughs> brother, <laughs> art enthusiast, <laughs> avid jogger. I was going to say cyclist. <laughs> <laughs> it's really annoying how uh, the whole entire time, again, and again, he's just he's just in charge of all of this. But what, is that, what does that do for me? Does that, does that change? I don't know what to say. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, my. Yo. Whoa. Whoa. Fuck. Roman Bridges, director. <laughs> brother. Oh, brother. <laughs> Art enthusiast. <laughs> Amateur chef. <laughs> Licensed stockbroker. <laughs> he's behind it all along. CPR certified. <laughs> 
Wow. Yeah, remember the QAnonymous Club? Candle maker? <laughs> Glass blower? So many trades. Who would have thought such a complex man could be behind I'm more complex murders. than people think. <laughs> That's why I'm the bad guy. I don't even need a partner. I'm just so interesting. Roman Bridges, director. <laughs> Shut up, dude. Every time he's on the screen. It's so annoying. We get it. You're, we get it. We get it. Right, we don't have Sydney saying, Sydney Prescott, survivor. <laughs> Sydney Prescott, survivor. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sydney Prescott, survivor. Oh, what a sweetheart. <laughs> it's just goofy. The whole movie's fucking goofy. Yeah, it's the best way to describe it. And then, goofy. and then, 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 and then. Mm-hmm. We have we have just the, the the cherry on top of the sheer stupidity cake. <laughs> hmm. Let's how do we signify some we the, we gotta wrap this up. It's the end of the third movie, the end of the trilogy. We gotta figure out all the rules. Gotta tie a bow on it. All right. Uh, she's uh. What if uh? What if Sid doesn't uh doesn't do the alarm? Yeah, hey, she doesn't need it anymore. And then like, okay, that's 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 not bad. <laughs> That's not bad at all. And he's like, uh, Wes, uh, maybe you know the thing, you know, you are the master of suspense. Maybe you could uh, add in my idea. And he's like, oh, no, yeah. Uh. <laughs> Tell what Craven sounds <laughs> in your mind. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, uh, yeah. yeah. I'm now in this Wes Craven impression, man. Oh, uh, yeah, no. Uh, I, uh, no, what if... Uh, <laughs> How old was Craven in your head? 26? <laughs> yeah, that's, a bit, that's one of the movies piece of shit. <laughs> All right, he didn't have a final cut. He and he shouldn't have taken. It. This should be the one where he's like, "Guys, I'm just not capable of directing this movie. It's too big for me." All right, <laughs> Scream One and Two is you know whatever. Scream What's Three. What's his name? Erig Kruger. What was his name? That was Eric. It's something. It's like E R E N. Pregnant. Eric. <laughs> America. What if uh? Oh, what if uh? She just uh? What if the door swings open? She she le- she leaves it open. That's deep. And then what if she stares at it? And then she just leaves. That's character growth, guys. Like, look, she's no longer she's no longer paranoid. It's over, <laughs> and it's 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 the only. And you know, it's over because the franchise is over. And in a symbolic way, it's kind of like saying goodbye. But no, no, it's not. Because the only way this, the only way it's not, the only way it's not dumb for Sydney Prescott, Survivor, to <laughs> leave her door ajar. First off, that's just stupid in the strictest sense of this is a house. Yeah, you live not a barn. Okay, <laughs> Sydney. Just in the middle of the fucking woods doesn't mean that you don't have to, you, 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 there's no more need for a class. All right, Kaczynski? <laughs> I'm thinking maybe you close the fucking door. I'm thinking you'll lock it too, and then you can leave the alarm off just to say, I didn't. I, I wasn't so nervous today. That's fine and all. It's also the middle of the day. You always need to be on just yet. And the only way <clears throat> that that even makes sense to leave the door open, the only remote way it's even slightly clever is if the open door is supposed to be them saying, we're leaving the door open for a sequel. But I also really don't That's think based what on was. what Scream 3 was that anyone was clever enough to make that connection. I think I'm giving them a little bit of just uh, benefit of the doubt here, assuming it made sense. I think they actually <laughs> thought... We should... We, no, yeah, we, no, yeah, we should, we should, we should have... We should probably have Sydney just... Look at the door and accept her fate of I'm never going to close the door again. And harsh cut to black. Harsh cut to black. We'll play Red Right Hand, and then we'll stop playing Red Right Hand, and we'll play some shitty fucking song. <laughs> what do you think about that? Sounds great. Yeah? Well, then, I mean, you know, it's... All you motherfuckers are going to pay. You are the You are the ones who are the ball lickers. We're gonna fuck your mothers while you watch and cry like little whiny bitches. Once we get to Hollywood and find those Miramax fucks who is making the movie, we're gonna make them shit. We're gonna make them, hold on. We're gonna make them eat our shit, then shit out our shit, and then eat their shit that's made up of our shit that we made and eat. Then you're all, you motherfuckers are next. Love, Jay, and Silent Bob.